Hello and welcome. My name is Emily Kyle, registered dietitian and certified holistic cannabis practitioner. And today I am going to show you how easy it is to make can of butter in a crock pot or slow cooker. Right, to get started, you're going to want to visit emilykylenutrition.com, type in can of butter in the search bar, and the first thing you will find is my recipe. And there's a print button right at the top where you can print out all of these step-by-step -step instructions, follow along and make it super easy. To get started, you are going to want to gather all of your equipment and ingredients listed on the printable directions. First thing we need is a dish towel. We will lay this down in the bottom of the crock pot to prevent our mason jars from breaking or cracking. Next up is mason jars. You are going to need at least two, but you might need more depending on the size of the batch you make. If you're going to make a smallish batch, a pint-sized mason jar is perfect, and then make sure you have another clean one at the end for straining. Next, we have a slow cooker or a crock pot. Pretty much anything will do as long as it will hold a consistent temperature over time. Next, we have a digital thermometer. If it has a probe, it's perfect. You can set it right in the water bath and it just allows you to keep track of the temperature throughout the process. You might It's not necessary, but you're going to want a small digital scale. This will allow you to weigh your cannabis in grams so you know not only how big of a batch you want to make, but you'll also be able to calculate the final dosage at the end. If you are not sure how big of a batch you want to make, I do have, you can print on my website, this printable flour to oil ratio guide. It will tell you how much flour to how much butter you want to use, depending on how potent you want it and how big of a batch you want to make. Linked in here, I do have my edible dosage calculator. You can find that at emilykylenutrition.com, but at the end, you can input all of your values and get a rough guesstimate of how strong your final product is actually going to be. And last up, not 100% necessary, but somewhat helpful are these silicone butter molds. I'll leave a link on where you can get them on Amazon. In this video today, I'm going to be making a smaller batch of can of butter. I'm going to be using seven grams of cannabis flour to one stick of butter. Of course, if you want to make a bigger batch, please feel free to grab the printable flour to oil ratio guide. I'll leave a link below. I should mention, I'm going to be making my can of butter with cannabis flour buds, but you can also make can of butter with trim, with keef, with concentrates. Today, we're going to be concentrating on just bud, but I do have resources available if you want to make can of butter with other materials as well. Your first step is going to be to set up your work area, a easy place for your crock pot to plug in. And you are going to set the lid aside. You don't need that right now. And the first step is going to be to lay a clean dish towel down on the bottom of your crock pot. And this will just create a buffer between your mason jars and the crock pot to help prevent the jars from moving or cracking during the cooking process. The next step is going to be to fill the crock pot at least halfway with hot water. Using hot water will save you a ton of time in the long run because we are trying to create a hot water bath and this will heat up much more quickly if you start with hot water. You are going to want to fill this at least halfway with hot water but probably not any more than that. The goal is to create a water bath, which we will be putting our mason jars inside of. So if you want to test it out and put your mason jar in just to make sure that nothing overflows, that's perfect. But you ideally want the water to come up at least halfway on the sides of the jar. You want it to cover everything that will be inside of the jar. Once the crock pot is a little more than halfway full, go ahead and insert the probe of your digital thermometer so you can keep track of the temperature. You can put the lid on, plug in your crock pot and set it to high. You're going to leave this until your digital thermometer gets in the range of 160 to 190 degrees. While we're waiting for our water bath to heat up, we can measure our cannabis flour and get it ready for decarboxylation. Now, if you are not sure of how big of a batch you want to make, I do have this printable flour to oil ratio guide that will help you. I'm using one stick of butter, so I'm going to be using seven grams of flour. I'm going to measure that out, and while I do so, I'm just going to break my cannabis buds into small popcorn sized pieces. I don't like to grind and I don't recommend grinding the cannabis for two reasons. First, the trichomes, the part that contains all of the medicine, ends up at the bottom of the grinder instead of inside our butter. And second, the grinding releases more chlorophyll into our plant 
er, chlorophyll is plant matter and it releases more into our butter, which leaves you with a greener, more green looking and green tasting butter, which most people don't love. So leaving these in just popcorn sized pieces is perfect for this process. Now that I have my seven grams measured out, I'm going to put it directly into a mason jar so we can start the process of decarboxylation. This really is a simple process and it helps to convert our THCA or CBDA into the active forms of CBD and THC. If you skip this process, you might not feel the intoxicating effects of cannabis, so you don't want to skip this. But what you're going to do is gently add on the lid and you're going to simply place this jar in the oven at 240 degrees for 40 minutes for THC flour and 90 minutes for CBD flour. Now the decarb process is complete. You can see our flour is nice and toasty brown. And next we are going to put any butter or oil or ghee or clarified butter that we are going to be using right inside the jar. Next, you will want to add the lid, make sure the rim is clean, put your butter inside, and twist this to fingertip tightness. It does not have to be too tight, but you also don't want water to get in. Now that this is ready, you are going to carefully remove the lid. It will be hot. You're going to carefully place this right inside the water bath, return the lid, and leave it, set it, and forget it for the next four hours. Now that this has been cooking for four hours, it is time to take the jars out of the water and get rid of the water bath. You do want to be careful though because it's going to be extremely hot. Please use a towel or something that will keep you from getting your hands burned. I just use a towel like this and set it aside. Allow it to cool enough to handle, and while that is cooling, go ahead and get rid of all of this. Once your can of butter is cool enough to handle, you can comfortably handle the jar, it is time to strain, and this will separate the infused butter you just made from the plant matter. There are many different ways to strain. You can use cheesecloth, French press, some people use pantyhose. There are many, many ways, but here's the most simple. The most simple is going to be just a coffee filter that you probably already have at home with a mason jar. And what I like to do is I will just set that inside and I will actually put the rim back on so that it is tight and easy to strain. Now the coffee filter it is super super thick so it's going to take some time to get that butter to go through here so if you are impatient like me there are other options. I'm going to be using um, a fine mesh strainer. I believe this is for tea but any type of strainer will do and you're just going to make sure that you have a clean glass jar underneath to catch the infused butter. Next, you're just going to pour this through the strainer and your delicious golden oil is going to sink to the bottom while you're going to collect the plant matter. Now, once this is out, you're going to want to press down gently on the plant matter to get some of that butter that has been soaked in back into your infusion so that you don't feel like you're losing too much volume because when we do make can of butter we do lose quite a bit of volume from the cooking process you see here this white these are the milk solids that come from butter and these don't end up in our final product so if you started like i did with one stick of butter you're not going to get one stick of butter back you're actually going to get a little bit less about three ounces so you want to go ahead go ahead strain like that one thing I will mention, the more you squeeze the flour, the more green your final infusion might end up being because you're actually squeezing out some chlorophyll. So it's up to you how much squeezing you want to do, how green you want your final product. And then ultimately at the end, you can save this leftover here. It's called leftover pulp. Many people will save it because there is some valuable goodies left behind. And you can add this. I have a whole list on my website. Um, if you type in leftover cannabis pulp, you can add this to things like spaghetti sauce or pesto or anywhere where the texture would mix in well. And you'll get a slight buzz just from whatever is left over on the plant material. Once your can of butter is strained, you have your beautiful oil here, you actually can just use this as is. Now, if you're baking, say you're making cookies, sometimes the recipe calls for softened butter. This is melted butter, so you might want to refrigerate it depending on which recipe you're working with. 
If you do want to refrigerate it, I do recommend pouring it into a silicone container. This will make it easier because once this goes in the refrigerator, it will harden and become solid. And at the bottom, you will notice there's a little bit of liquid. That's going to be the milk solids and a little bit of water left over from the butter. And that's very normal, but having a silicone container makes it a lot easier to drain off once you are done. So you're going to take this and you're going to put it directly into the refrigerator so I just pulled this from the refrigerator. It is solid and ready to go, but I wanted to show you what I was talking about with the milk solids and the extra water left over. You can see a little bit has dripped out here. This ends up, it's perfectly normal. Again, it's because of the milk solids and the water from the butter. It's fine, but you do wanna get rid of it. So I'm just gonna put that in a separate container. You can see all of that there. If you want to keep it, you can, but this water that's dripping off here, I just use a paper towel to gently dab it up and otherwise you are ready to go. Your can of butter is ready to use and you can put it into any recipe you're ready for. Our very last step is how to store the can of butter. Now, if you're going to eat this quickly, you can go ahead and store it in the refrigerator for really the expiration date that comes on your butter. A couple weeks generally, if you leave it for more than a couple weeks, know that it may mold. We don't want that. So the best way is going to be to prepare it and put it in the freezer. Now, one recommendation I do have would be to store it in individually sized portions. So if you're going to be eating this in maybe a teaspoon or a tablespoon, I really recommend cutting it up and then freezing these small pieces. That way you don't have to continually thaw and refreeze, thaw and refreeze, which could potentially destroy your cannabinoids. So refrigerator, freezer, or eat it right away. Otherwise, the freezer should keep the potency of your can of butter and it should be able to stay in there for quite a long time, several months, maybe even a year. But if you decide that you want to thaw it, never throw your can of butter into the microwave. I have a guide on my website for that as well, but the high temperatures of the microwave could destroy your cannabinoids. So let it thaw at room temperature or I have some other solutions. But otherwise, make sure you're storing this great, really appropriately so that you don't mold and waste your hard-earned product. Well, I hope that video was helpful and showed you exactly how to make can of butter at home so you can get started right away. Again, you can go to emilykylenutrition.com to print out the recipe and get the step-by-step -step guide and instructions. And finally, I'm going to wrap up with the most frequently asked questions I get about making can of butter from those who are inside my private Well With Cannabis membership community. The first up is, do I need a crock pot or slow cooker? No, you don't. You can absolutely create a water bath other ways. So you can do it on the stove top just be careful because the stove top gets a little bit hotter than a crock pot can but I also have a guide on my website for how to make it in an instant pot which makes it super easy as well so I'll leave links below you can check that out the next question, why butter? Well, so butter is great because cannabis is lipophilic, meaning it loves fat. And our ultimate goal when we're making can of butter is to get the trichomes and the cannabinoids from the plant into the butter. And so the butter, because it has such a high fat content, those cannabinoids are attracted to it, leave the plant matter and go right into the butter. So this process, it does work with any type of butter or oil. Anything that has a lot of fat is perfect for making an infusion this way. I will note that you do not want to use any type of plant-based butter or fake butter, margarine, anything like that. Those contain vegetable oils and other ingredients and they tend to separate. If you are looking for a vegan option, you can just use coconut oil and that works perfectly. Another question I get asked all the time, what is the white stuff? Again, those are the solids that come from the milk proteins in the butter. Nothing to worry about, you drain those off at the end. Again, why did I end up with less butter? Well, because we're removing the milk solids and because there is water in butter that gets removed as well, you generally end up with about 20% volume loss. Now, if you are trying to make a batch of cookies and it calls for one cup of butter, make sure that you infuse more than one cup of butter because you know you're going to lose a little bit at the end. What if my mason jar floats or breaks? Sometimes if you have a small jar, it can float. And what I do is I typically just put like a clean rock or something that's heavy that will weigh it down. Unfortunately, accidents do happen and sometimes jars can break. And the saddest truth is it's best just to get rid of it. It's not worth it if you have any shards of broken glass that could really, really hurt you in the long run. 
does the final color matter? And this is a great question. Some people think they need a very, very green butter for it to be potent, but that's not true. Color is just chlorophyll, that green pigment that's in the plant. And that just shows how much is absorbed from the plant into your final butter. So if you have a very pale, light yellow butter, that doesn't mean you did anything wrong necessarily. It just means that a lot of that chlorophyll wasn't transferred over. If you have a super dark green butter, that also doesn't mean that you did anything wrong and it could be just as equally as potent. It just means how much chlorophyll has been moved over. Fresh cannabis will definitely have more chlorophyll. And if you're using trim instead of flower buds, you will see more green color as well because there is naturally more chlorophyll in the plant leaves. And finally, last but not least, how to calculate the dosage. So I have an edibles dosage calculator on my website. I'll link to that as well. So if you know the amount that you used in grams starting with, you can use this. You're also going to want to have a guesstimate of the percent THC or CBD inside your cannabis flower. So different strains will contain different amounts of THC or CBD. Typical THC flower contains anywhere between 15 to 25% THC. So for this example, I'm just gonna go middle of the road, 20% THC. I use seven grams of flour and I put that into the edible dosage calculator. I put in that I use a 20% THC flour and then I use the calculator to select the fact that I used a butter as the extractor and I also check the box to account for the loss associated with decarboxylation. Once I got that, the final milligrams in THC that I got for my potency is going to be 311 milligrams. That's for the whole batch. Now remember, you do lose volume at the end, so you want to do that accordingly. So instead of putting in a full stick for my, which would be four ounces for my calculation, I put in three ounces, which is roughly 18 teaspoons, and that accounts for the loss. And so if you divide that 311 by 18, you get roughly 17 milligrams of THC per teaspoon of can of butter. Again, you can go to my website, emilykylenutrition.com to use the edible dosage calculator and get a rough guesstimate of exactly how potent your final product is. Thanks again for joining me. I hope you found this video helpful. You can find all of the resources at emilykylenutrition.com. Subscribe, like, and I hope to see you again soon.